Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this Thursday, November 14th, 2024. It is 4.20 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Many one of these days, folks, we'll just do a video where we just spend 10 minutes of saying praise God, praise God. But I do praise him all day long, again, no matter when, no matter what, in all things, give thanks I continue to praise him for you guys, and I thank you all that continue to join as we continue to get stronger and get bolder and get more confident knowing who we truly are in Christ. Amen. With that being said, today's title, uh, Boundless, Boundless Reservoir of Strength. And folks, I had fun looking up today's background. I was looking at some pictures of reservoirs, you know, with the dams and beautiful pictures and just guys like i tell you when we do these videos when i when i'm researching for the backgrounds what god puts on my heart just these pictures alone speak to me like today's picture look at this boundless supply of water controlled by a dam and this dam you know it'll it'll hold that back but when that dam breaks and releases Man, that, that living water is going to come flowing. And now God's speaking to me that that dam, when Jesus returns, the dam is going to bust. And all of this living water is going to pour out. And this is going to wipe out anybody and anything that doesn't receive Jesus. We know there's so much in the Bible about living water. And God, this is what God puts on me. It's awesome the way he speaks. Amen. But uh, yeah, it was fun. This is, man, this is beautiful. That's just beautiful. Anyway, folks. Uh, boundless Reservoir Strength, thank you again for joining. I'm going to go ahead and just read today's scriptures again. They've got Isaiah 41.10 is the, the leadoff verse. I've got highlighted Isaiah 41.10 through 13, and this is what the Word of God says. A lot of us are familiar with Isaiah 41.10, and this is the NIV, in case it sounds a little bit different, folks. Well, Isaiah 41, starting in verse 10. So do not fear. There it is again, folks. That's a command. For I am with you. That's a promise. Do not be dismayed. That's a command. For I am your God. That's a promise. I will strengthen you and help you. Promise, promise. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yep, promises. Verse 11. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Verse 12. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Praise God. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. Verse 13, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Amen. Praise God, folks. And that's an Isaiah, but those promises, they stand true right now today as you and I are reading them. Uh, we've got a beautiful one here. I skimmed across it. This is by Charles Spurgeon. This is what he wrote. God is able to do all things. Believer, until you can drain dry the ocean of omnipotence, until you can break into pieces the towering mount mountains of almighty strength, you never need to fear. Never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen. We cannot destroy who God is and nothing changes who our God is. Think not that the strength of man shall ever be able to overcome the power of God. Guys, we got to know that no, no matter how we could take all of our problems in the entire world, all of them, if we could physically put them into a boulder, a rock, if we could physically put all of our troubles into a reservoir of self-pity and what are we going to do now? God just laughs at it. That does not change who our God is and how powerful he is. Amen. The same God who directs the earth in its orbit, who feeds the burning furnace of the sun and trims the lamps of heaven, has promised to supply you with daily strength. Praise him just for the strength he has given you today, folks. While he is able to uphold the universe, think not that he will prove unable to to fulfill his own promises. God, God, this is things we got to ask ourselves. If we truly believe, do we truly believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the grave? If we're, if we're believing he's capable of doing that, 
do we believe that God truly created the heavens and the earth? He created all living things that he created you and me. If do we truly believe these, then why? Why do we not believe that he can get us through these scenarios and these little situations and these debacles in life, these tribulations? Why do we not even believe God can take care of a simple head cold? Guys, fill in the blanks. If we believe God did all of these, we have to believe God can do everything. With God, all things are possible, folks. Oh, man, I hope this speaks to you. Praise God. Uh, remember what he did in the days of old. In the former generations, remember how he spoke and it was done, how he commanded and it stood fast. Shall he who created the world grow weary? No, he hangs the world upon nothing. Shall he who does this be, be unable to support his children? No. Shall he be unfaithful to his own word? No. How can he fail us? He can't. Guys, we've said in the past before, take yourself a piece of paper, fold it in half. On the right side, write down all the times God has failed you. And all, or, or just take a piece of paper and start writing down all the times God has failed you. I think is what I meant to say. Your, your pen should never even touch that paper. God has never failed us. Satan will tell us that he has, but those are lies of Satan's. God, God does not fail. God is not a man he should lie. He's not a son of man that he should change his mind. Um. He will not fail us. When he put such a faithful promise as this on record, make, he made sure the Bible, God not only spoke it and said it, he made sure somebody wrote it down and documented it. The un infallible, the living, breathing word of God that will never perish, never perish, God. He made sure we had his proof documented. We read his word. And we read his word. We physically read it, and we still have troubles believing it. Hmm. Will you think for a moment that he has outpromised himself and gone beyond his power to fulfill? No, doubt no longer. You who are my God and my strength, I can believe that this promise shall be fulfilled. The boundless reservoir of your grace can never be exhausted, and the overflowing storehouse of your strength can never be empty. Praise God, Charles Spurgeon. Guys, this is just another great reminder how Freaking amazing. Yeah, I'm saying it. how freaking amazing and awesome our God is. Our daddy loves us so much. He wants his children. He wants his fathers and his believers to hold him to his word. That's why he has given it to us. Guys, they, I'm telling you, the day is going to come where we're going to be like, wow, did I leave so much laying on the table? There are so many promises of God that I never even thought about touching. Guys, that's why we got to get in this word and read it. Hold God true to his word. He wants us to or else he wouldn't have given it to us. He would have just sent his son, been crucified, and said, okay, I'll wait until the day comes, and if they, you know, who knows? But <laughs> God knows. I think it's in Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 31, 31. The secret things belong to God, but everything else that he's made known to us, we're called to share that with one another. So, guys, just don't forget how awesome our daddy is. Now, and I'm praying maybe this is a wake-up call, maybe a, a reminder for some of us, whatever you're going through, call upon him. Call upon that endless supply of his, that endless strength, that endless reservoir of living water that's freely ours because of what Jesus did. Amen. So until tomorrow, hallelujah, Friday, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.